You may or may not feel let down by last night's election, but one thing that I think we can agree on is the data geeks let us down. Whether your candidate was predicted to win or not, the predicted candidate did not win. And a lot of people are asking why, not least of which is the people putting faith in the startup VoteCaster. VoteCaster's mission was to gather, publish, and analyze voter turnout information in swing states to provide early predictions to the race. The problem was that even though they had so-called data gurus who had worked on both George W. Bush and Obama's campaign, they got almost all of their predictions wrong. And uh, so a lot of people got their predictions wrong. A lot mm -hmm. of experts, this was just basically across the board, it was a failure of expertise. Uh, how did that affect the election? We don't really know. Um, but, you know, it's it's a big question of like, are they, we did, there were a lot of polls. Um, polls re rely on people telling the truth. Were they or not? Right. Yeah. And I don't really understand exactly how VoteCaster is doing this versus kind of some of the legacy systems that either were or were not trusted leading up to um, last night's um, election. Uh, in the case of VoteCaster, though, like there were a number of, of ways that they kind of, you know, that it kind of fell apart, at least yesterday, specifically yesterday. Started with a, de a delay that was due to technical glitches early on in the day. So they couldn't, you know, they had promised early results and they couldn't kind of meet that promise. Nevada projections were off. Um, they had included Jill Stein there, even though Jill Stein was not part of the state's ballot. So that threw things off. A 3 p.m. update said that state maps weren't actually accurate since they didn't include early voter estimates. So they had to pull that down and put that up later. I mean, the question really comes down to a lot of these, you know, these early poll results or the networks, rather, the networks that are covering this, they kind of hold off usually to a certain point for the sole purpose of hoping not to influence the election in some way. Votecaster kind of aimed to do something different. And, uh, you know, like you said, you don't necessarily know the actual outcome, the actual like cause and effect of that, but stumbling along the way while offering early results probably does, doesn't do anything. You know, it's not good for the scenario, I would imagine. No, I mean, I think we've seen this in the tech industry so often where someone's just like, I'm going to disrupt this right. industry. I know like, how to do it right. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> is it food delivery or, you know, is it cab drivers or is it whatever? And, and there's a lot of missteps along the way because, you know, some ways, the traditional way we do things, waiting until the polls close to report results might have its advantages. I mean, we don't know if people were like, ah, we got this, I'm not going to vote. I mean, mm -hmm. that's not on VoteCaster, that's on the person who didn't vote. You got to vote, whether you, whatever you see on VoteCaster or wherever. Um, you know, it all also affected the financial markets. Like they were up sure. and down. Um, they had big partnerships with Slate and with Vice. They were going to, you know, say, we're, we're not going to do it. We're going to do it better than the traditional media. And even though the traditional media did a lot of things wrong in this election when it comes to uh, reporting and data, they were worse. Yeah, I mean, what... <sighs> Like I said, I don't know the the machinations behind the scenes on how how you get to this point. I do know that a lot of people tr put a lot of trust, and you know we talk about a lot of stuff on this show all the time about information, data, algorithms. We put a lot of faith and put a lot of trust in the technology that's working behind the scenes without in many cases, understanding exactly how we got there and whether it's actually a good idea to do that or not, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, especially, you know, in the case of like, you know, our Facebook feed, what are sure. we seeing? Is that reflecting, uh, you know, people in general or is it re reflecting the, you know, carefully cultivated group of people that believe exactly what I believe? And that, you know, if you want to hear more about the filter bubble, either read Eli Parser's book, The Filter Bubble, which is a little bit out of date, but still great. Or watch This Week in Google because they just talked about that yeah. for several hours. And I mean, along that topic, I think it's absolutely obvious. It's completely obvious. You see what you want to see or rather what the Facebook algorithm thinks that you want to see. And mm -hmm. uh, that's one big kind of eye-opening experience I have through the last 24 hours kind of walking away is like, do I really want that from a Facebook? Do I really want to be surrounded by information that is tailored specifically to me? Or do I want a more even killed, more representative of, of all uh, type view because then I'm not just like I'm not lulling myself into into this sense of of something is the way it is because it's all I see you mm -hmm. know and that probably goes for everyone I think it's at least for myself I think it's a it's a healthier to kind of get a, a wider view and understand. Uh, more fully beyond that. You know? Yeah. And I mean, on a personal note, like I found myself late in the night, like it wasn't Facebook that I turned to or Twitter because there was just such a barrage. Um, I mean, Facebook was like, you know, 
six or seven hours ago barrage. But there was just, I wanted to connect to the people that are important in my life. Right. Like, you know, I was home with my family. I texted some close friends. Uh, you know, we connected about it this morning. It's like real people as opposed to just the people that constantly uh, show their political beliefs on yeah. Facebook. It's like, it wasn't necessarily their belief that I liked or disliked. I just wanted to connect with the real people in my life as opposed to just the four or 500, you know, people that uh, post four or five times a day on Facebook. Right.